Everybody hear me? Is the microphone working? Y'all hear me? Okay, I'd like to call this meeting to order the July 10th, 2023 regular session of the uh, Lincoln County Commission Budget Committee. Uh, normally we would have met on the second Tuesday, which was the four, the uh, first Tuesday, which was the fourth. And uh, we didn't get a chance to do that because of the holidays, so this was the date that the commission set aside to have our regular session. Uh, like open tonight, uh, first on the agenda is the county mayor. Nothing. County mayor doesn't have anything tonight. That's good. Uh, let's move on to the finance director. Uh, I'd like to introduce Jason Nix in his first at bat as the uh, finance director. Jason, tickled to have you. I know it's been a been a heck of a time to be breaking in a new person, but uh, thank you so much for everything done. Go ahead. And well, thank you. Uh, appreciate it. Um, first on the, on the agenda, I guess, is the tax relief information. This has come up a few different times. I know over the commission meeting was briefly touched on and in the last budget meeting. But um, with, with this, um, and I talked to Mary Jane uh, as our trustee, and she's helped me with all the numbers on it. Basically, right now in the county, uh, it's a year-over-year -year number, but it, and it changes. Obviously, year over year, some some pass away, some move away. But as of last year, prior year, we served in this capacity. We already have a tax relief program in place, okay? And this relief, not freeze. So let's be clear on the verge. Um, 546 applicants last year, and that and last year's number, which is provided by the state, was at 135 dollars mm -hmm. per approved applicant. Uh, what we had proposed was. And with this you know, imminent tax increase coming on the board, is what can we do to help those people that are over 65 and um, and disabled, possibly? And that there were, and that's where I was talking to Mary Jane today. We need to be clear in the minutes: Are we covering um, just the people over 65, which is the norm, or is it are we are we including the disabled as well in there, which is some do, some don't. So we need to be clear on the minutes as we go forward on that. But anyway, um, last year the state gave $135 of tax relief back to each applicant that applied and that was approved. Uh, we had proposed matching that, whatever that number may be. Now that number could change this coming year that we won't know until we set a, a sale, until we set a property tax rate. We won't know what that number will be. Um, but we have, we know in that number we've approved or we've talked about approving 135, and then on top of that adding an additional $50. Now that obviously comes at a cost, which is roughly the equivalent of about a penny on the tax rate to do that. Now, we've also talked about uh, revenue this year coming in or the year we just, <laughs> the fiscal year we just are just leaving. Um, this year's, we got revenue that we pay for it based on the interest income. Our money that sits in the bank, which is, it's in the, it's, which is what the trustee this year moves around, does grab an interest rate. Interest rates obviously, as everyone knows, are, have been up over the last year. With, with as rates have increased, the Fed's increased, the rates have went up. So we've gotten better return on our money. Having said that, we we've, we've seen a pretty good pretty good return this year to, to the tune of about seven and four thousand. We budgeted somewhere around a hundred, so we're up in that number quite a bit. Um, so we could take some of that money and easily pay for this because the equivalent of the five forty six at that number. Let's just go with numbers that we know. If we the equivalent of that is seventy three thousand seven ten. If we were to cover that that five forty six now. That make sense to everyone? And we need uh, I think Mary Jane said it's 56 disabled. Correct. That could qualify. Correct. So add that to it. No, that's in that number. That's in that 546. So that's that's kind of the numbers on the board. So that includes the 50,000 on top of the 135. Okay, and I think Doug's mentioned this in the past. I know he has in the budget meeting. So that's that's the tax relief part of it. Um, any questions on that? Questions on that, we're going to kind of take each item as we go in the boat tonight. So, questions about the tax relief. So, it's going to include the elderly homeowners, the disabled homeowners, and the disabled veteran homeowners, and the withers of disabled veteran homeowners. No, no, that is where, like I said, that is where we have to be specific in the minutes. Do we want to cover <coughs> what we, what as far as what we cover in that? It's what the state covers. It's what the state covers. Yeah. Right. Are we matching the state? We're actually doing. I don't think the state does all the disabled, or maybe all the counties don't do this, all the disabled. We're going with what the state does, anyway. Okay. To match your so that will be, if the state does all these four, we're going to do the same thing? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Are we going to set a cap on that? We're going to with 100,000 match. Is that 
Mr. Uh, Chairman, I got one question on that. Yes. Uh, his weapon, I believe it was in the legislature this year. There was something about them keeping their weapons or they had to go through the state to get it approved to be kept. Was that passed? I don't know if it got passed or not. Yeah, I think actually that uh, Jason read from that. What was it? Uh, it was the Tennessee Crip. Uh, let me go back. Uh, it was, sorry, TCA 4 7 110. It is good. Okay. That's the new law they just passed? This, my, this my legislature? And this is, I didn't look that up. That is, that's coming from the Sheriff Blackwater. Well, that was coming from, well, you know, they had a, they had it in the bill to be passed or not passed, and I don't know if it ever got passed or not. Is Sandy here? Murray, do you know if they passed it? I don't, we haven't received it. Okay. I, d I don't know what the final decision we're, from the legislature is. Okay. And I pulled uh, the law straight off and read the law, and we also consulted with another sheriff that had served as the past president of the Tennessee Sheriff's Association with this matter on kind of some amendments that had been made in the past. And he said it would be up to this legislative body to do so, and that would suffice. Okay. I'm good. <laughs> All right, uh, okay, on the surplus property, uh, entertain a motion uh, in regards to this item. So move we approve. Mr. Case moves that we approve. Uh, second. Ms. Bonnie seconds that motion. Any further discussion or questions? All right, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed, nay. All right, uh, did we have an additional item uh, from the Sheriff's Department that y'all wanted to bring up at, at this time? <clears throat> <laughs> We've been working, as y'all asked, to figure out how to come up with some money where we could cut our budget or at least reduce the budget to where we could help with this situation. Uh, Sandy and I sat down, went through the budget pretty much line by line, looking at some things that we were wanting to do. The Guardian that y'all had voted on, we have figured out another way to make that happen, manipulated a few things without it coming out of taxpayer dollars to do that. So all in all, we're going to go over several things, but in, at the end of the day, it's going to cut about $200,000. Uh, don't look for this to happen every year. I'm not going to be sheriff every year, but uh, this year, we're by watching our budget all year long, because we were afraid this might be coming, we're actually in pretty good shape this year. So if we do these things, uh, We've got about 130,000 that we can cut out of our budget straight off the boat, off the budget itself. Then Sandy Joyce and I sat down under a new administration looking at new opportunities to change personnel around. And Joyce has got some ideas that she's gonna run by you that will save, will save money. So, with that being said, I'm going to let Sandy t explain what all we've cut out and how we've manipulated a few things, and then let Joyce explain what would happen under a new administration. So set aside as what Sheriff Blackwater said tonight in reference to the money that's been saved, there is some more concerns that we'd like to address with this committee tonight. So I was wanting to address the raise issue, nothing to do with the 5% cost of living raise, nothing really set aside to do with the 2% that were set aside for the step raises. But as y'all understand that the Sheriff's Department has their own pay scale, we're under our own policy, we're due a 2% step raise beginning every uh, physical year up on your anniversary date. This is built into our budget, and we have been told by the comptroller's office that they have withheld that raise until a budget is passed. I do have mixed emotions about this, but I do understand it because the 2023-2024 budget has not passed, which means that funding has not been put in place. So I do understand that portion of it. 
I do have some concerns, and my concerns are, under our policy, it states that employees shall be compensated based upon their salary and grade that they are assigned to in any position his or her holds. If promotional raises are being withheld under the budget as it is not passed, we're working employees without proper compensation as we're violating our own policies. I'm requesting this committee to take action on this matter tonight to resolve this because this cost to the county and taxpayers may be more if not resolved. So I'll answer any questions that you may have on that before I move forward, if there's any questions. I, I spoke with you briefly about that. <clears throat> I know Jason, I think you talked to the comptroller's office, but I don't necessarily agree with the comptroller's office on this one because, I mean, every single budget year, we haven't had a tax increase in five years. <coughs> And every single year, you know, we're on a continuing budget. So when you know if you don't have a tax increase, then you're by definition on a continuing budget, as we are again this year. So I don't understand the difference in the two definitions. Because in the last five years, we've obviously been on a continuing budget every single year. We we've actually passed one, but we've been on a continuing budget. And because we haven't passed an increase this year, we're still on a continuing budget. So I I, I just don't necessarily agree with that route. And I think we should pay it. I mean, that's just that's just me. Man. I think they should get their step raise just like they all want. Can I ask a question? Are we talking about just the step raises, or is the comptroller holding money because uh, we're talking the, about, we're we're talking about both everything. in general? So I spoke with Jason um, a time or two, and also I spoke with Amanda at Finance and handles their payroll. So what the initial what I'm under the impression, Jason, you stop me if I'm incorrect by saying this. But what I'm under the impression from the comptroller said that they would not have any new funding. So we have had a few people since July 1 that we've sent in letters to the finance department that has nothing to do with the 2%. We have sent that in and have requested that. The comptroller's office withheld that. Right. Also, we've sent people in for promotion, uh, promotional offers, which means, so we had a corrections officer, for instance, go to a corporal status. So that means they shall be compensated at what I read to you just a few minutes ago. And that funding is also not being compensated. So I've got multiple positions that they have got promotions that shall they, they shall be paid under these circumstances and we're withholding that funding and that is a major concern uh, due to the fact that you may have fair labor standards come into play. I think that's true for all departments though. Uh, until we get a budget passed that they're getting paid on last year's budget. Is that not right? That's correct. Yeah. So yeah. To, to echo the comptroller, she's not wrong. The comptroller, when I called, I called her auditor first at the, <coughs> through the state, and he strongly advised, saying his words were, you're on a continuation budget. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you're on old, old last year's rules, but there's no money to fund that. You're just, yeah. It's just not there. The, so, with that being said, so we went, we'll hire with CFAS, Melissa, our, our coordinator. She said, best practice, yes, I would advise the same thing that he's saying, but if you want to go and take a step further, which I did, was um, Melissa Huffstetter, I believe is her name, uh, or Megan's has there, excuse me, uh, with the comptroller's <coughs> office. There's our financial advice to the comptroller, and she put it in writing uh, and said, because we were, same thing, we wanted to have a leg to stand on in the finance office to say, hey, this is why money's not going forward because this budget's being held up on continuation budget, yes, old rules, but no money's there. It wasn't in the budget last year to go into the new year. So that's what, we, I, am I wrong on this? I thought we always go back then and catch up. Once now we would, budget, once the budget passes, they, they would, would be paid that, in retrospect. They would get that money. Yes. It's not that they got And this, would, this even went, not just my question to, the, to all three of those I just mentioned, was, okay, what about the elected officials? And their state mandated money that they're getting a raise on this year. You know, we they get there's a mandate by the state. They tell us what to do on that. Us at the county level, sure, we we kind of dictate that you know by our own pay scales. So, same thing, elected like officials. It's coming back. It's got it. They don't pay their raise as well until the budget. I'm not as much talking about the two percent step raises that you know are voted on each year, even though you know we say they're built in because there's a 20 year pay scale, etc. I'm more so talking about people that have gained promotions that you're not paying them appropriately, and in return, we are violating our own policy by doing so. I don't see that to be good practice by doing that. What we're, what we're trying to get cleared up in our minds, as much as anything, 
if we promote a person the end of June and we don't pay them for that promotion, for, for the grade that they're supposed to be in, then we're working them below what our own policy says they're supposed to be making. Here's where I've got a question, if you really want to muddy the waters a little bit, is if we still have the money in that particular payroll line item, like corrections, then how can you not pay them on the pay grade that they're supposed to be paid in? Because our, our <coughs> working on a continuing budget, our corrections line item still has money in it. Either way you go at it, we haven't given it back and we haven't spent it, it's still sitting there. So why would a person that went from a regular corrections officer to a corporal or a sergeant not be paid as a corporal or a sergeant? And how do we do that without violating our own policy and procedure? Is, is what we're trying to figure out because the money's still there. We're so just having a hard time for retention as it is, and then you put this in the mix of it, and that makes it really hard on their department because you're asking people that are working for really not enough money as, as it is, and then we're giving them a position, and we're actually a corporal in our jail that works especially at night shift upon a sergeant not being present is in charge. They are the sheriff of the jail when no one else is present, and we're working in this situation. So it was just something for concern for us tonight that we wanted to address to this committee and choose to take action or whatever the resolution may be. Of course, like they said, I, the money will come once we get a budget passed. Hopefully, that'll be very quickly. Uh, but like I said, it's holding up a lot of stuff. Yes, sir. And, uh, so I'm not sure uh, what the answer is on that. So you're duly noted and we'll... Uh, We'll take a look at that and see. Maybe something that, I don't know, we have to go to a different committee and, and kind of change the rules a little bit or something. I, I, I don't know. Like I say, it's, this happens so infrequently yeah. where uh, it's been a while since we've had to work on it continuously. I hear you, and I don't, I don't you know I don't disagree. We've had this conversation. Um, it may be something since it's uh, debunking our own personal policy manual, maybe something a personnel committee has to get together to, for this contingent. You know, in the future, you know, I don't know, but I, I mean, I'll go back to our auditor and our controller and ask them specific questions regarding your department on those not separating but promotions is what you're saying. Right. Really? Yes. That's what I'm saying. The personnel committee is going to lead as we get a budget passed. We've got a couple of things that we need to look at. So if we ever get a budget passed, we're going to set a meeting. I just want to wait till that's done and over with, and then we'll, we've got a couple of three issues we need to see about. I'll get all the information out to you guys with our policy to make sure that y'all understood what I said tonight, and then y'all can move forward however the committee chooses to move forward with it. Okay. Also, another thing tonight I want to address, and this is on a lighter note, obviously, as we're saving money. Um, in reference to the 23-24 fiscal year budget, after the June budget meeting, I was able to address with the sheriff some areas in the budget that we could save some money and save on calls. Out of the 22-23 budget, we did have enough money to actually expand for the cooler, which we had within this next physical year budget. So we were able to go ahead and purchase that as of June the 30th. Unfortunately, we did because we had Tennessee Corrections Institute come in, and if we had not have had the proof of purchase, we would have been found deficient and then wrote up for it and failed inspection. So we were able to redact that from this year's budget, along with the Guardian, as the sheriff spoke of, with the software and the Guardian itself, $54,000. We're going to try to use different means to be able to purchase that at this point. Also, um, Sheriff McConnell, or Chief Deputy McConnell <laughs> is going to uh, speak on some ideas that she has to move forward. And with a total call savings of around $200,000 that we will be allowing to be redacted from our budget this year to help offset the tax rate. Enjoy. On that note, um, 
we've all been struggling to try to figure out a way to save the county money and the Sheriff Blackwilder and myself and Sandy have worked so hard to try to do that. I had come to uh, Sheriff Blackwilder with a proposal to do a little restructuring uh, if, uh, you know, if I get appointed for my new administration. Uh, it would be changing a few positions, but in doing so, it would not uh, be any more money asked for. Uh, it would be no more new personnel. And actually, uh, after doing this, I ran that by Sheriff Blackwilder and Sandy, uh, and they felt like it was a great idea. Uh, it would actually save approximately $63,000 plus fixed costs. There would be a cost savings to, to uh, the county. Uh, not to say that at some point in time, I mean, I feel like that this restructure will work well for the new administration, but you know, should we run into a problem, we can always come back and visit that later. Um, I can't think of anything else, do y'all? Um, but thank y'all very much. I, I, I've been a commissioner before, and I certainly understand the struggle that you, you're you know, dealing with, and I just appreciate what you do. Thank you, Ms. Joyce. I, in fact, I was just thinking to comment that Joyce has been a commissioner, I know you served, what, three terms? Yes. Uh, so, she, uh, and she, I think she was around the last time that we had a situation like this, it seems like. So she certainly does know where we're coming from, so. Is there any forecast on food bill? Um, I spoke with Dina about that just uh, last week, and she is working on drawing up the RFP for that. I've gotten the menu out to her to be able to do so, and we're gonna be remitting that hopefully in the next week or two. What I mean, I don't, I don't see any light at the end of the tunnel, just to be honest. 400 over? Uh, if we were to go with the bid that we had, we would possibly be in the hole right at $400,000 right off the top, and that's why we choose not to do that. Thank you. Yes, sir. And I was going to point out, too, that, you know, the 63000 plus fixed costs, hopefully that would offset about a penny uh, of the county state <coughs> rate. You brought up TCI inspection. We, we had a surprise TCI inspection the other day. And uh, I've got, if y'all have seen it, it's really rather confusing, but they came in, there's 471, I think, items that they inspect. We passed the inspection with no problem. They came in the office, were very complimentary. Uh, two things were found deficient, not deficient, but two things were found to talk about. One was one of the suicide watches, or two of the suicide watches were not logged correctly. And we found one of those was in the nurse's station when it wasn't logged on the suicide watch. And the other one was just flat out wrong, okay? Uh, the second thing, what was the second thing we found? The fire panel. Yeah, the, it's the battery. The new fire alarm that we put in down there has never, like every fire alarm, it's never acted right. <laughs> but in the panel itself, it has alarms inside the panel to tell you that the alarm is going to go off for the alarm to go off, I guess is what it is. But anyway, <clears throat> One of the batteries is bad, and we've been trying to get it fixed for six months, and the company that puts it in is kind of like most companies, once the warranty's out, it's over. So they wrote, they wrote those two things down, along with the cooler, they wrote it down as a topic of discussion. Well, then today we get an email from TCI that we're going to get re-inspected in 60 days because we were found deficient on the suicide watch and the battery. So I had a discussion with the director of TCI today about whether, you know, which one is it? You came in my office, said everything was very good, no problems, we weren't, we passed inspection without any problem and didn't need a recertification. And then we get a letter that says they're coming back in 60 days to relook it. So he told me that probably we would get another letter in the mail here in a couple of days saying that everything had been taken care of and was okay. So the jail 
effectively did pass inspection with flying colors, medical passed inspection with flying colors with no deficiencies. So with all the turnover and the chaos that there has been back there in that jail, it did pass inspection. So if you've got a letter saying it didn't, then hopefully in a day or two I can give you another one that says it did. So. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. All right, uh, Jason. Next, next on the agenda of the financial reports that are in your packet. No. Any questions? Already? Any questions on the financials? All right, let's get into the budget next. I, I want to thank all the commissioners who brought forth uh, uh, ideas for cuts, et cetera, that could be made to our budget. I, I appreciate those commissioners that participated in our, our uh, special call meeting we had on June the 27th. We had asked for suggestions and, and y'all's thoughts on what may, might make our budget, I guess, more acceptable to our commission and to the public at large. Uh, I'd say the special meeting was on the 27th. We, we set it back then so we would have enough time to plug in those ideas in, into a budget uh, you know, to make a proposed tax rate match appropriations resolution takes time. So uh, we were uh, needing that extra time to get all that stuff in. So it's kind of difficult for one to just come in at the last minute and you know, change, uh, throw a different rate and, and everything else because we have to, to fix everything going down the budget too. Uh, especially want to thank the finance department uh, for all their hard work. They've received lots of suggestions and a bunch of what ifs and, and what if we did this and what if we did that and, and it put together figures on that. And uh, so like I said, they've been very busy. It's been very difficult, uh, as I mentioned earlier, to get all this stuff, stuff done, especially with the change that we've had in and our finance director occurring at the same time. So thank you all so much for your patience uh, with us commissioners. Uh, we have put together a plan that drops the proposed rate by 24 cents down to 86 cents. Uh, this option makes cuts, yet still includes the new pay scale, uh, salary increase, and enough money to address our issues at Hollywood schools. So Jason, I'm gonna let you present uh, the option that we've got uh, here tonight. Okay. Uh, I'll echo the chairman. Thank you. Um, Let me get that before you go. I need a motion on the financials. I did not get that. Uh, I make a motion. We approve. Mine is we approve. Bradford seconds. Any questions, concerns on the financials? All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Those opposed nay. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'll echo. We've had a lot of departments come forward. Chair of EMA, uh, elected officials, uh, Sheila, Randy. We've had. And, and other commissioners, like you said, has come forward with ideas and, and things. So uh, when Vicki was still here, prior director, um, I think she laid out pretty good the last meeting, if you, if you were in attendance, um, on the numbers of how we got here. I won't rehash all of that. I think a lot of us know where that is. But when we got back to the office the next morning and I'm gearing up to take over, we, we stripped it back down to a little more bare bones. And I think the time, if you remember, two weeks ago, we were at 39 cents to break even, that's before we did anything. So we stripped down a little further and got 36 cents. So 36 cents, what does that get? 36 cents, let's not count the Dublin obviously, but 36 cents includes the nonprofits. Um, it, um, if you add seven cents to it, break that seven cents down, well half of that is for the 5% for the sheriffs, the jail for their raise, the jail department. The other, the other uh, half of that, the other three and a half cents, is for the um, new pay scale that the personnel committee came out of. We talked to you know, a lot of elected officials and other commissioners, and I think you just get more bang for the buck, so to speak, with that new pay scale, and they like that. It, it, brought, it, it really, that new pay scale, as opposed to doing 10% across the board, that new pay scale really helped the lowest income up first, and I think that's what they like the most. So when you get, when the smoke clears, you got 43 cents. Double it, that's 86, that's better than number. Now there's still things to be paid for and done, and um, Part of that is the enhancements. We, if you remember, a long time ago had enhancements on the list. It was presented around 1.3 million of total enhancements, and y'all went through those budget nights um, and went to cutting and got down to about 300. And since then, it's gotten down to it's down to the bare minimum of 151,000 of enhancements. Those are reoccurring and and non-reoccurring, but lumped onto one category. And we talked the last meeting, or, or you guys talked about. Um, you know, reappropriating ARPA funds, and that was thrown out there. So, 
that's one thing we went with finance. We went in, it's okay. Well, where, where can we pay for that last uh, 151? We reappropriate some money out of ARPA, which they had drawn around the whole night. It was about the uh, courthouses, windows, and doors. It's, it's appropriate 448000 in that line item. Uh, if you take 150, you still leave 297 for that appropriate fund for that. I'm not sure if that gets it or not, but you know we need to pay for this year. It, it, so that's where that other part comes in. Paying for the enhancements out of ARPA, it's a one-time thing. It, it, you know, I, financially, I, I don't want to care for it, but that's but that's okay. It's what it's where we came to. So 86 cents is where it's at. I mean, uh, um, I've talked to the comptroller again over other issues besides just the ones we've talked about already. Um, and I asked questions today to our auditor. You know, how what happens if the commission does not pass a budget? You know, in time, you have by law by, if by August 30th it has to be passed by law. If not, it's you have to ask for another continuation past September 1. And there's reason. There's only a few reasons you can actually do one. Most of them are no, you can't, they just don't probably like that. But what they can do, the state can come in and, and pull back their funding. Um, and that would include even they would all, all the courthouse, the general one on one funding, um, even the highway department at that point, which, as y'all know, is separate budget to us, so, so to speak. I'll pause it underneath the same thing, but they would receive funding as well. So that's very, some very real stuff out there when it comes down to it. Um, you know, also based. If they come in, they would come in and they would, uh, based on the prior year's budget, they would set a property tax rate for us. Um, and it would be bare minimum, just enough to get us back to the black. It wouldn't, there'd be no raises, there'd be no anything. All, all that extra just goes away if, from what they're telling me. Um, and, and basically, it just takes that local decisioning that, that the elected officials have been elected to do. It takes it out of their hands, and now it's the state telling you what to do at that point. Now, State funding. Once a budget does pass, it, whatever, if the funding would come back, they would relinquish you. You get your funding back from the state. But, but um, you know, as a commission, it's it's. I want to take my commissioner hat off right now, placed over here, just talking about the, just the sheer money of it, the sheer dollars and cents of it. I mean, the commission has been faced with a, a hard hard job this time. Um, you know, lots happened in the last five years since the last property tax increase. I know, you know but put it on the grand scheme of things, it's been a Inflation that hasn't been heard of since the late 70s, early 80s, for my time. On well, some of that, on Earth, my time. <laughs> um, you know, a, a pandemic, first one on a global pandemic, first one since polio. That's one of my times for a lot of people's time. Um, you know, we've had the lowest rates ever for how, how long? So they can only go up. So when they have, and now I've talked about earlier that we have gotten good things from those rates. Our, our fund value, you know, we've gotten good interest rate off that. Um, but that's going to go away as the ARPA money gets, it's been appropriated and it gets spent over the next year. And it has to be spent, I think, by 26. Is that right? Um, that, that balance is going down, which is that fund balance, which is holding us right there, kind of at bobbing our head in the water. It'll eventually kind of go down. And as that goes down, so does a lot of stuff. I mean, it's, it's, it's imperative to pass a, a property tax increase that will get us, get us back to the black. It's, it's, as, as quickly as we can. Um, I, I just, I think, I know just talking to the auditors and the comptroller that um, these are just serious, serious things that I, I wouldn't want to invite invite them into our, into our, into our local, our local government. Um, the number one job for the commission is to pass a budget, set a property tax rate, and pass a budget. That's the number one job of the commission, and it's it's a hard one. And um, um, until that's done, we haven't fully Commission fully has done its job. I mean, everything else, the resolutions and everything else we do is part of it too. But the number one job is to set a property tax rate and, and pass the budget year over year. Um, but 86 cents is, I mean, that it's it's still daunting, obviously. But um, it's, it's not a dollar ten, and it's it, it literally is where the numbers lie. I have in my short time is since I've been here, shadowing Vicky and. It's, it's been, it's all we've done. There's so many other things in the finance department that I, I needed to get my feet wet with, and um, every minute of every day that I was there, including now, has been all budget, which is fine. That's where it's, that's, that's important. It's really important. But anyway, all right, any questions? All right, questions, uh, anybody? Need 
to understand exactly what's what's in this thing. Like I say we've dropped it 24 cents. Uh, we uh, say still have the raises in there, still have the pay scale in there, and still have enough funding in there to do the school project that we need. Uh, but this is about as low as it it gets to be able to have that school project in there as well. Uh, tell you that uh, so we got the past budget by got to have it in the books by August 30th doesn't leave us much time there are certainly things that I do not like in this budget and in past years would have voted against it just on that principle alone the spending the 151,000 out of our funds for reoccurring expenses just keeps me alive but uh, like I say I understand why we're having to do it we're trying to keep that tax rate down and there's some things probably make it a little better for us next year but uh, don't like spending money uh, for what may come next year uh, on this year. But like I say, we've done that with 151000 So questions, concerns about what Jason has presented in this case? Um, are we going to do a wheel tax increase of $25? That's $806,000. If we vote on it this month, vote on it next month, two-thirds, and there's no petition, uh, Comptroller says it, it's automatic, and then we, it starts January 1st. And I also found out from CTAS we can take that $25 or that $806,000 for the resolution, and it goes straight, all of it, to the general fund. So what we, we don't have to do specify? Mm -mm. You can do a resolution and specify it 100% goes to the general fund, and that'll bump it up. That's $806,000. I recall, I don't know, Ed, you may remember, uh, uh, it's pretty specific how you got to do those wheel taxes, isn't it? I mean, there's certain language. Briefly, briefly uh, and the text of your day, when we look at it, I didn't have a lot of chance to look at it, and Ms. Kate's right, I mean, it's a uh, two-thirds mm -hmm. vote, two consecutive meetings, but if the voters, 2% of the voters, the last gubernatorial race, if they sign a petition, it's got to go to referendum. 910 people. Well, the taxpayer ought to understand we're trying to help them. We hear them. So we're trying to come up with money that doesn't cost them. This is going to save them money on the tax rate. Then I looked into a tax relief match. Um, I pulled the census. 20.3% of the people in Lincoln County are senior citizens as of the 2022 census from the state. That, if you take that, um, that's like 7,300 people, okay? If you only have 546 applying now, can we do a $25 tax relief also and attach it to that uh, uh, a tax relief we're doing now on the other end and give them another 25, but it has to be 65 and up. And it has to be on the income of 30, just like we're doing with the tax relief. So instead of what we just did, you're proposing adding another twenty five yeah. dollars to it? Take it out of the wheel tax. They wouldn't pay the wheel tax in one vehicle. Um I got to hear from uh, Shelby County. Let me see. Yeah, they just went up Yeah. And what they do is it's one vehicle <coughs> per, per 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 household. Okay, and they get the twenty five dollars taken off that wheel tax off of their tag. That's what I'm thinking. Here they give them another twenty-five dollars. Well, if uh, so, what you would just designate the wheel tax to go to the general fund, and so that would be, be kind of something that would help us with salaries and stuff next year. Is that what you're how you would sell it to the public, or? Well, I'm thinking it doesn't help us this year. Uh, That's the problem with the, the wheel tax. It just doesn't help us this year. If you only have 546 apply for like that tax relief, okay, on their income of 30,000, just take another $25 out of that wheel tax. Instead of paying the $100 wheel tax, they'd only pay 75 if they qualify. And the 25 would give them the break on the 25, we're going to raise it. You understand what I'm saying? All right, yeah, I do now. Yeah. Uh, like I
guess we'd have to say we'll, we'll have to pass first. Yeah, and we that's could, true. That would help them a little bit more. Would that have tax. to be something that would be incorporated into the language of the wheel tax? Or? Yeah, it, it's, it's complicated. Uh, yeah. I figure it all out, study it, and uh, you know, come up with a resolution. And it's something that's going to require some study and effort. I mean, I can't see that we could do anything tonight. Yeah, I don't think so either. So, uh, so we could bring it back, say, next month, and after you checked on some things, and that, uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be done right at budget time, really. I guess the wheel tax could be voted on any time during the year, couldn't it? But I think she's saying that if we went with the wheel tax route, it would reduce some of the property tax. It would reduce a lot of the I say it does not help us this year. It, it will help you starting in January. It yeah. will help you with the rest of this year. It won't, it won't help in January, because if you've got, uh, let's say you have to vote, you have to, we'd have to vote twice, and the people will call this out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is not going to be skipped, and so it'll be, you know, March, the next election, unless we decide to pay for an election that would just vote it on that. So, I mean, you're looking at March before it would even get voted on. And unlike the property tax, where when you appropriate that, you've got from, I think the billing goes out in October, and it's all got to be in by uh, February, you know, that wheel tax, it's just coming in every month. And it's uh, the last time we did the wheel tax, it took like six or seven months of building up the wheel tax before we had enough in there to use it. So it's not like you can just, wheel tax starts January 1 and we can start spending that money because so little comes in at a time. I'd say it's not like property tax where it comes in over a period of five months and it comes in every month for 12. So I'd say you really couldn't use it for a while. But we can have it started. But you, know, you can get it started. That would be something I'm sure we're going to need salary help next year in the future and whatever. Yeah. So that would be something that would be useful for next year. If we can maybe a motion for Mr. Sims to check out about the language and see if if your uh, relief that you want in there has to be incorporated into the motion. Because I know it's kind of really yeah. funny how you got to do those wheel tax things. Because I remember there was very specific language as to how, how you had to do it. Uh, so, a motion to have Mr. Sims check it out and bring it back to us next month. How about that? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll say move. Ms. Kate makes that motion. And the second side. Any further discussion in regards to that? And I guess, you know, once he brings that information, be prepared to, and that would be a, a $25 addition yeah. to the wheel tax, right? So, it would be essentially $125. $24 or something, yeah, whatever. All right, got the motion to second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed nay. No. All right, got one no. All right, uh, let's uh, get to our uh, our draft budget. Back to you, Jason. <coughs> Anything else that we need to do there? <coughs> we, we, we went it. over it all. Didn't we? we went over it about all of it. I, 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 Entertain a motion to uh, approve the budget as presented, 86 cents uh, in the appropriate appropriation resolution for that. So, what's the will about? Oh, Mr. Bryant moves that we approve that. I'll second that motion. Uh, this is the appropriation resolution. Any further discussion? Like we've been working on this since the first week of April, so. If we, if, if we don't do the, uh, I don't want to put this. If we don't do the 86 cents, we don't get a school do we? That's right. If we just leave it, get it low down to 25, it only comes to 50 cents. So they're not going to be able to have enough to get a school. No. No. And, and, we, and we're way short on the general fund side, too, with that. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. Is, you know, we can't deficit spend. We can't operate the red. It's not the federal government. You know, we go buy, borrow some money oh, and, and flow along. You know, we, we can't do that here. You know, it's, it's got a match. And we got to be able to pay it. So our fund balance would drop. You know, we would, uh, I, I just don't even go there. You know, we've got to either make the cuts or make the appropriate revenue increases to cover it, one or the other. You know, we can't, can't deficit spend and say, well, you know, we'll make up this a million and a half next year. We, we can't do that. Well, we've done a good job in this case. I really think we did. I think you got to. I heard a lot about compromise the other night in that four hour meeting. I think that definitely hits the compromise nail. Um, you know, I think we made some 
maybe a couple two years from now, but I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But um, the other thing too that I think is worth noting is that you know the seven cents are still there for those races. We've got a decent, we've got a pretty decent uh, scale for employees. You know, the flip side of that, the, the ugly side of that is if we don't continue down that path, I've done a little math there, and that winds up costing 13 to 14 cents at some of the time. So it's worth saying that, you know, I think that's a pretty significant savings um, uh, versus the alternative that, that most probably will be. So um, I appreciate it. I really I, did a good job. I appreciate it. I, I'll echo that a little bit. I mean, what, what's, it, what's pushed forward here is, you know, I, when I looked at this um, last year, when we just came out of it, the year prior, the red numbers, big red numbers, 1.1 uh, going into 1.4. So to yank it back the other way, to run it back the other way, that's what this is, obviously. And it still doesn't get all the way to black, but it's it's back, it's under 500,000 red as opposed to 1.5 or, or a three that we were staring at our, in, in, in our faces. But that 500 is showing a trend to any auditor is, hey, look, it's going the right direction. That, um, it, it, it's, it's moving that way. You know, I just talked about interest income. We've got interest income. That's not just gonna stop overnight. We'll still have that easily through this next fiscal year, or should should have, right? Should stay up. In fact, you know, there's a chance if you turn, turn on TV, it's going up next month again, they say. so. That should trickle down to us as well, just like that, as long as our fund balance stays up there with ARPA now, like I said, it's a yin and yang, it's a seesaw. It, it comes down using it, so does those rates as we, as we know. Um, but I think we will catch that tiger by the tail, so to speak. <laughs> we'll be able to catch them probably by mid-year, if not sooner, based on these numbers. Um, but, I mean, it is it is bare. We just, it's not giving us any buffer. By any means, it's, it's literally just getting us there. With this uh, $2.96, that's just going to be a buffer? Yeah, Is that what you're saying? It's there. It's not, not <laughs> getting us there. Yeah. Okay. I, I got it. Yeah, one of the things when we got the ARP money, the reason we can use it any way we see fit is because of the rule of laws of income. Uh, one of the good things that Lincoln County has done and this goes to everybody, whether you're running a business, your household, you can look at things all long term or you can look short term and you need to have a balance in there. Over the last several years, we've really looked at long term. We're probably in better part of the county as far as buildings, a lot of the things with the exception of maybe what we brought up by the school, but we built a new school. We built all these new things that needed doing. We still got that money set aside in ARP. I think we need to dip in that AR ARP money because that was originally loss of income. And I think we need to because in the next two to three years, we're gonna have the ARP money. We're not, that bridge is not gonna be done that we need to pay Kid Road. We can go a little while longer on those windows at the courthouses. Yeah, it'd be nice and would save some energy. But <coughs> as soon as they get something going on the Richardson Farm, we're owed back $3.6 million from that, that that we're paying for, that IDB has got to pay for. There's about $5 million there. No, it doesn't, it doesn't get us back maybe in one year where we should be, but it's not, it's going to keep us from being in a situation with a comptroller. And we didn't get in this situation in one year either. Uh, we haven't increased taxes in four years. But when you look at all the good things we've done, when we built a school, new EMA building, we have a new archive building, that courthouse was not ready to fall in, but we spent over a million dollars on it when the sewer wasn't even working. Uh, in it. So a lot of good things have occurred that we've spent money on. I just don't think we need to punish the taxpayers in one year when we can do some things to make it a little more palatable. All right, commissioners, uh, any committee members, any more comments, or questions? Randy, I 
we dipped into it, how much did that change the 86 cents? Here are the things, okay, we, we hadn't mentioned it. I sent this out to everybody. You know, next year our, our taxes on business property, which doesn't affect these older citizens because they're not running a business, that's coming up one two million, one point two million on, on that. Uh, I have no idea when you know rich reform anything's gonna happen there. We're still probably a year or more out before anything's gonna happen there. But that ARP money that's you know that we've got for the paving and the windows, there's a little over a million there that we uh, can use because those windows don't have to be done now. We've been 50 years old, they're still decent. The worst thing about them is the energy efficiency it's not. And uh, Ricky Pierce has done a wonderful job. He's worth a million dollars of the money he saved us and all the things he's done. Uh, he was there Saturday because now we've got the installation in the upper story of the courthouse. That's saving us money. So uh, I think we're looking for I think it's an idea problem, it's not a money problem. I think we've got the money there to, to do it and get out from under this without um, doing something that penalizes all of Lincoln County. So if we took the uh, paving money, which, you know, how much, if you're talking about 600? There's 600,000 there, there's 400 and something. That's you know, so that's windows, uh, 12 And we've got the bids back on the windows, just the windows. So that money's not gonna do it. Might as well forget that because mm -hmm. we can't, the money was there, the bids are slightly less than our A bids. <coughs> it's close to $600,000 for those windows in the courthouse. So that that's kind of like that roof out of uh, jail. You know, we, didn't, we don't have enough money. So if we're 43 and we take, take 12 cents from that, that's one, that's, we're down to 31 cents. Well, the problem is, is you're using one-time funds. What, how are you going to pay it next year? Wheel when those funds aren't there, you know, and the wheel tax doesn't match. How well, we got how do you the, do one, the one point two comes in next year. Over there. Well, sure it does, but more expenses coming. Things that we hadn't even thought about from an expense standpoint. You don't spend money that that you hadn't got that maybe we're going to get that you don't know what kind of expenses you're going to have. The, the road leading up to that bridge, we got to have it, and we've got to pay that ourselves. So now that's we spend that. And that's not the road we're leading up. To. If we six hundred thousand, we go ahead and spend that. Where's where's that going to come from to to do it when we need to? And, and Tim's going to go ahead and do that before the bridge gets built. He can go ahead and do that beforehand. Uh, so it'll be spent by twenty six. Why would you? Why would you do that? Well, because the bridge is coming, and you gotta you gotta have that on the side end. Well, there's other people want paved roads too, you know. But uh, besides, we've been trying road. to get this bridge for so a as long as I can. Road, we got to no bridge. Remember, Commissioner, but it doesn't make sense using one-time funds, and we're having to do 151 thousand, really against my better judgment as it is. But to jack that on up there, a million dollars that we're gonna spend out of the art money, and then where where does that come from next year? You know, I just a terrible precedent, very unsound is what I call it, financially, by doing it that way. Jason, you know, I know you're new. <laughs> you, you, you went through the numbers, the numbers you recommend is 86 cents, is that correct? That's right, yeah, that's right. Uh, Thank you. I move previous question, Mr. Chairman. All right, question's been filed for. We've got a uh, motion and a second on the floor for the appropriations resolution. Uh, for 86 cents on the tax rate. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed nay. All right, the motion is unanimous, seven to one. Have uh, Jason Hambrick, by the way, is, is uh, out of town. That's the reason that he wasn't here tonight and he had let us know this <laughs> several weeks ago. So he didn't, he didn't want anybody to think that he was, was ducking anything. But uh, all right, next. Uh, the tax levy, uh, yeah, tax levy resolution. Sorry. Uh, resolution be resolved. Um, it's setting the, the, the tax rate at uh, two point two point nine six two zero. That would bring the general fund getting one point three 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 of the highway with no change of point. 1453 
general a purpose general excuse me general purpose school no change in point six six eight one um, general debt service for school point six five four four and education capital project point one six zero nine with the add up the two point six two zero rate. Okay, tax level resolution I move that we approve. A second to that. Second. Major seconds. Any discussion or questions in regards to tax? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Uh, uh, what's next? Next, the resolution to make the appropriations to nonprofit organizations in the county of Tennessee for this next fiscal year. Um, as you can see, all the nonprofits are listed there. Uh, if there's anything else to really read off, if you can to read the numbers, I can. I guess necessary, everybody got it. We're going to entertain a motion to approve the nonprofit appropriations resolution. <coughs> so Mr. Sanders moves that we approve. Second. Mr. Taylor seconds. Any further discussion? Anything else on the nonprofit? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. All right, uh, get down to my section of it. I just had uh, had one person, uh, I think Doug Campbell, had something that he wanted to comment. He wanted to make it. Now here's his birthday. Now I appreciate y'all holding well, you about 31. 31. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I'm letting you on the cake and the ice cream. Uh, I appreciate you giving me just a moment, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I thought at our last meeting I was going to present this, so uh, I do want to let you know that I appreciate the support over the last seven years that you've given to the fire department. Uh, I do want to make a few points as we move forward uh, in what we're doing. I was asked, uh, I don't have near the budget that the sheriff has to do the con conceding with, but we did take two of our enhancements, uh, $20,000 that you had approved, and we took those out of another line item on request, and hopefully at some point those can be added back into our, our building project fund there. Uh, I do want you to understand that Lincoln County Fire is one department. By resolution, we are a county fire department. We're listed as Lincoln County Volunteer Fire. We are currently <coughs> made up of 12 uh, different stations across the county. Uh, no community, there's no such thing as XYZ station in the county. We are Lincoln County Volunteer Fire, and we are a county entity. Uh, I mentioned this uh, for the simple reason that uh, I want you to know that these volunteers are given to the county, free to the county, uh, but at a very personal, individual cost to each of them. And I think it's very commendable that they do. Uh, we are the only county department that is not fully funded as a county department. And when I say fully funded, when you're on an incident scene, every other department that's on that scene is paid to be on that scene. The Sheriff's Department is paid to be on that scene. Uh, we had a big uh, wreck the other weekend on Big Cut. Six hours were we on that scene. And the volunteers were there about two and a half hours of that, maybe three, before we were able to release them for free on a Saturday morning, for free. On July the 4th, they responded to six calls on July the 4th. Two structure fire calls. One of them, a true structure fire, where they spent three hours for free of their time and their holiday. Another call wound up, thankfully, to be a false alarm call. I think it's important for you to understand what this department over the years has given to the county. Uh, as you look, and there's a packet which will be emailed out to you. I, I, Apologize, I thought it was in your package for tonight. Uh, the call volume has increased 41 percent since 2014 in this department. Uh, the volunteerism numbers have decreased, but we still have these dedicated firefighters who don't always agree with me on how our department should be run or how we should be presented, and that's good. Uh, I don't want them to always agree with me as the appointed department head, 
because they're very passionate about the community that they serve in. And they work very hard serving in each of their communities. Uh, we've got a station right now who's had money that they've saved up through their fundraisers and they're wanting to buy a vehicle. And I've told them no right now because I don't know if the county's going to pass a budget or not. And then if we do it, the county will accept another vehicle into the fleet that we, the county, are going to be responsible for maintenance and upkeep on. And they're having a hard time understanding that. Well, we've got the money. We've raised the money. Why can't we buy it? Why can't we insure it ourselves? But we are Lincoln County Volunteer Fire Rescue. We're not XYZ Station, and you don't operate by yourselves. So we'll work that out in amongst ourselves, but, uh, and, and we always do. Uh, we have had a very successful last seven years, and this commission over the last seven years has worked to make improvements to the county fire department. Uh, but to ask that money that we've designated and to set aside, and it doesn't seem like much, $20,000, so that we could do maintenance on equipment and maintenance on trucks be taken out of a building fund so that we could do maintenance on them really kind of hurts these guys just a little bit, you know. Uh, and they're, look, we're, we're team players. If they wasn't, they wouldn't be volunteering, you know. So I want you to understand the heart of the volunteer and the heart of this group that's doing this when they're the only ones who's on the scene for hours for no pay. And at 5 o'clock in the morning, when we leave the scene at 4, they're going home taking a shower and going to work. And all the other entities are going home clocking out because shift change. And they're going home and going to bed. Our group is going home and going to work so they can support their families. Uh, our calls ranged on July the 4th. They started at 1.30 in the morning and they quit at 7.37 that afternoon. So just think about the time that they're giving up. And uh, I don't know, and, and this is, like I said, I'm very appreciative. I don't want this to come across as I am unappreciative for the support that you've given to the EMA and the fire department over the years. But even as commissioners, you receive a small amount of pay for the time that you spend being a commissioner for this county. But I don't know if you're spending the number of hours that they're spending. 911 page this department 2,431 calls last year. There was a department in Alabama who was <laughs> bragging that they're getting a $6 million station, $4 million station, because they hit 2,000 calls and they were going to be able to improve their ISO rating. A career department adding another station for 2,000 calls. And as volunteers, we were asked to respond to 2,431 calls last year. If you look at the, an independent survey, the value of a volunteer is $28.12 an hour. If you just take a $25 average, that's $60,775. That's 2,431 times 25 per individual that responded. And most calls were more than one. We had a lot of calls that you look at this where there's multiple stations responding. So as we move forward and as we go forward, uh, I'd like for you to consider these volunteers out here because they're working hard for this county for free, okay? And we're trying to make a department that this county is very proud of and very uh, respectful of and continue to offer your support to because they're gonna keep trying to do fundraisers and buying equipment and like I said, you've been great. We've got two new trucks with some of the art money that you designated uh, and gave to us, the, the other two that came in. So that's four trucks that y'all designated last year. Uh, so we're not unappreciative, uh, but sometimes we have a hard time understanding. And some of them feel like they're still under-supported and underappreciated in the county. Uh, 
for what they're doing. So I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, that This will be emailed out to you uh, in your packets. And if you have any questions, please call me or I'll answer anything right now. Did you have any firemen that uh, came here tonight? I've got them? some. Uh, if they want to speak, I don't know. There's a couple of them. Just wave their hand, stand up. So yeah, so I want to wave your hand and stand up back there. So. Stood up back there in 1991 was in the first fire school class that was taught at Lincoln County that my call uh, my predecessor brought in. They taught half of it at Fletch and half of it at Petersburg. And Jimmy Thompson said they had one light bulb in the Petersburg station. They took their turnout coats and packed them around the door to keep from freezing. And he stood under one light bulb in the bay of that station and taught the first 64-hour or 58-hour at the time of rookie class that was taught in Lincoln County. They like froze to death. I don't know how many times Chief Thompson told me that story. Every time we go through Petersburg, he tell me. And Bobby was in one of that first class. So whatever 1991 is now, Bobby's been with this department and a very dedicated member and serves as an assistant chief with us. So. I appreciate the heart of these volunteers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Thank appreciate you. it so much. Uh, like I said, volunteers, gosh, they do a tremendous amount of work. That'll be something that a uh, whole department that we're paying for. You know, it's just, it's just really static. Uh But like I say, uh, we've got a lot of, a lot of things we need to, to work on. Humane society and animal control is another area where we ought to be spending a lot more money. Uh, like I say we're just trying to catch up. So I appreciate but the committee what you all have done. Uh entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, may I ask a question before we adjourn just for clarification. Sure. I just want to make sure I understand. Uh the forty three cents, does that include the two hundred thousand dollars that the jail said they found and cutting taxes <coughs> to travel from all of the departments? It includes it includes the everything the jail said it does not include the travel. Right. If you did the travel, what would that do? No, no, two cents, but essentially one cent for general fund, one cent for schools. Right. Right. I, I called and asked finance, and I thought that was going to be included in there. So I just want to clarify. We had it in there until about <laughs> middle of the afternoon, I think. Okay. All right. There's a draft version of it. <laughs> my next question is clarification because I've heard back and forth so just for a point of getting it on the record so that we know for sure especially for new people like me the Richardson property um, so I've heard yes we'll be getting that 3.6 million back no we won't be getting that back in the general fund so for clarification and a point of record what exactly will happen when those lots are sold will that come back to the general fund or are we not doing that because payments have come out of the economic development fund which is technically designated to support those types of ventures so just some clarification because it's confusing because I've heard both and I just want to know exactly what the answer well, is. Well we can we can request that the money that we spent be reimbursed to us you know it, it was said a minute ago that we get 3.6 million now we, we paid 270,000 I think we've made one payment so if the thing were to sell tomorrow, you know, we'd get that money back. But uh, any profits and stuff, you know, the IDB would use that. Of course, there really wouldn't be much in the way of profit. Did the they additional sell some down profit. payment not come out of the economic development fund? It, it did. And we, that money we can get back. But the uh, future selling of the lots and stuff goes to the IDB so they can operate to get infrastructure in. You know, there'll be grants matching all kinds of stuff that we'll have to spend out there. You guys. Uh, hadn't been around long enough to remember the days where it seemed like the IDB was uh, back up here at the budget committee all the time, needing money to, uh, you know, match a, a grant or to put in a, a sewer line or a water line or whatever. And we used to have to, to fund all that. Now they're on, in good enough shape where they can do that stuff on their own. And that's the way the industrial development boards were meant to operate by the state when they gave us, you know, the power to set those things up and they demand it all counties and cities have some kind of industrial development arm now just to do that kind of stuff. I don't know if I answered your question or not. We would 
Well, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I just want for clarification because we hear different numbers, and again, we are new, so I want to know, you know, what we'll be getting back. So for a point of record, the county will be getting back that initial payment that we put down as things start to settle. Right, we can, and we, or we could, you know, we could give it to the IDB if we wanted to, or we could be reimbursed for what we have spent. It depends on how we want to handle that at the time, I guess. Okay, and then did most of the people that voted not to not, did y'all understand that there was a grab of those extra two pennies or no? Understand that there was a... Those that voted, it voted, it passed with just one person voting no. Did y'all realize that there were two additional pennies on the table there? Yeah, it was a unanimous vote, actually. I know, but, well, no, I didn't know that. I thought that one person had voted against That was on the wheel tax. That was on the wheel tax. Okay. So, did everybody that vote realize that there were two additional pennies there or no? Well, I mean, there was a lot of things that we could have done extra, you know, but that's, we decided at the last minute not to put that in there. Uh, go with 86 cents instead of 84. I'm just trying to keep up with all of it. I want to make sure that when well, I'm done, I'm It's so hard to keep up, guys. It, there has been a lot of different variations of this thing, and we've looked at taking this out and that out. And get back to what I said earlier about the finance department. Got some money, I want to see how they, how they weathered all this. But right. Thank you for the clarification. I appreciate it. I have a question if I can ask one. Uh, I'll catch you uh, right. I'll come answer your question when we get through, Mr. Bryant. Uh, entertain motions, Mr. Bryant. Yes. That motion, uh, all in favor, right? 